So no, so that that persistence is key, right? Like you know, a lot of times, you know, people get in their own head. They hit people up one time, two times, and they're like, ah, they're not interested, and they don't they don't hit them back. Well, you never know really why people are not hitting you back these days. I know that even for me, like I'll get mm -hmm. in my own head. I'm like, man, why these people ain't hit me back? Um, but what what was the communication like in in those emails that you were sending? Were you sending a song that you that you felt? fit a particular show or what, what was kind of the messaging in those emails over the course of that year? Um, yeah. I mean, for, for me, um, because of the fact that I've been, I've been blessed um, working in the music business officially um, outside of my artistry, but as a business person, since I was 19, um, I've been a booking agent and an artist manager for a handful of artists from that same era as my mom, I was able to cultivate those relationships on my own. I wanted to work in the music business, even if it wasn't as an artist, because that was the business of music that I was passionate, passionate about. So I knew that, you know, my time would come at one point or another, as long as I was in and around these people and my way to get in was to manage and to, and to be a booking agent. So, right. um, you know, so, uh, with with these people at ESPN in particular, um, I never heard them say no. So mm -hmm. I didn't take a no response as a no. For me, uh, no response still means there's a chance to get a yes. And you're going to take a thousand L's before you get the dub. Mm -hmm. But when you get the dub, you got to be ready and you got to be uh, optimistic and you got to have a, you know, a readiness about you because that dub and that yes can come at any time. That's so, um, you know, so for me, it was, I didn't send him any music. I was just sending him emails and I wanted to have his attention. So I would send over the emails like, Hey man, you know, what's up? This EQ again, I'm reaching out. I'd love to send you a catalog. Hit me back. You know, next time, yo, I know you busy. I see all this stuff on ESPN, bro. This shit is crazy. I hope all is well. Hit me back. Yo, happy Thanksgiving, bro. I hope you and your family are well. When you get a chance, hit me back. It was just always like trying to establish that communication because I've also found that if you just cold send somebody records, they you may not have their attention, you may not have their interest, and it's just gonna fall into their you know never ending you know Gmail inbox or whatever it is, and you know you're never gonna get someone's attention that way. So for right. me, it was to always guard. It was always the message for me was always to garnish his attention, mm. and finally after like. Tries not lying. It had to be maybe eight, nine months. Like yeah, it was a minute. Sending him, me sending him emails at, like every two to three days. I was blowing up. He was gonna see my name every single week, no matter what, <laughs> pop up in his inbox. <laughs> That's a fact, too. And, and it just it, I just was I was blowing his shit up. And then finally he hit me back. And like, you know, obviously email like tone and all that stuff is up for interpretation. But it was funny because when I read the email. I felt like it was just like, I read the words, but I felt like the tone was like, yo, man, like, whatever, man, just send me, just send me whatever. It was like, you know, like, he was, he was tired of me by that point. He was, right. he was sick of seeing, hearing my name and seeing my name pop up on his shit. He's like, yo, just send me, you know, just send me whatever, man, just go ahead. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Now I have his attention. You know what I mean? Right. And then that's when I sent him the music. And it was maybe a week later where he, you know, he sent me an email back and was like, hey, you on the West Coast, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, tune into Sports Center this morning. I know it was 9 or 10 a.m. or whatever. It was Sports Center West Coast with Kerry Champion at the time, um, you know, and he said, turn it on. And, and lo and behold, man, the top 10 plays came on and they had forever bumping in the background. And, you know, that's that's that was the first placement, man. That's how it all got started.